Guard Squadron to Temperance. Do you read us now? Had some trouble with our long-range comms. You're the third patrol reporting comm blackouts. Head on back, Gunny. The commander will want a full report. Lousy comms. Chasing our tails for hours, and now we're late to meet the new boss. Well, do you want to race home, Chris? We might make it before his speech ends. <laughs> I ain't racing you. I learned my lesson the first 12 times. <laughs> Ash, the speech is starting. I'm not looking for speeches. So I'll just say, I'm honored to assume command of the Temperance in this fleet. Vanguard Squadron's reputation for bravery and integrity is unrivaled, which is why, effective immediately, we have been reassigned to an initiative codenamed Project Starhawk. Starhawk? Then those rumors about a secret project are true. What do you think it is, huh? Some kind of weapon? The key to victory. If it helps end the war, who cares? I care. I like to know who I'm working for. The good guys, Frisk, remember? The only people in the galaxy who don't have a death mark on you? <laughs> ah, Grace. The day ain't over yet. <sighs> Come on. Back to the temperance. We can meet the new boss. And anyone else he's bringing along. I'm Zarelda Sage, Chief Mechanic, and this here's the Temperance, my pride and joy. I imagine you're excited to join the action. Speaking of, here's the rest of your squadron. Hey, Gani, I got your new pilot over here. You go ahead, I'll meet you in there. Welcome to Vanguard Squadron. I'm Kyra Kuva, you can call me Gunny. Happy to have you on the team. Let's talk after the briefing, eh? You're joining one of the best outfits in the New Republic. Hope you can live up to it. Anyway, follow them into the briefing room. I think our new commander's waiting for you in there. Arrived. Excellent. Otto, meet our new Vanguard 5. Oh, the one who saved your skin at Foster Haven. Ardo Baradai, Fleet Intelligence. A pleasure. I heard they rewarded you with a posting to Chandrilla. A real honor. Very safe. But a good pilot shouldn't just gather dust. I needed people I can trust. And I figured you'd want to get back into the action. Huh. <laughs> There's no shortage of that around here. Right. Let's get you briefed. Welcome back to the front line, Vanguard 5. We should get started. Time to get you briefed. We 
should get started. As you've no doubt experienced, the Empire is jamming communications across this sector. I fear these blackouts could be a prelude to invasion. Vanguard Squadron, I need you to split up to solve this. Frisk and Grace, bring our new pilot to the Brental system's borders. The scouts we sent to investigate haven't reported in. Find out what happened to them, then regroup with your squadron near the planet Cavus. Gunny and Keo, that's where you're headed. If I were still an Imperial, well, I'd send jamming ships there. Knowing the Empire, I expect they're using these jamming vessels to disrupt our long-range comms. They'll have TIE squadrons in tow. Destroy all Imperial squadrons and jammers. Communications must be restored for Project Starhawk's future. When you've succeeded, regroup and return to the Temperance. Let's see how you do, Vanguard Squadron. Got a moment. Hello. Grace Salia Vitara Sina. Grace, if you like. It's a pleasure. I've been with Vanguard long enough for Gunny to trust me with second position. And she doesn't trust easily. Especially those from Imperial families. Well, everyone finds out sooner or later. Yes, unfortunately, my dear estranged family builds TIE fighters for the Empire. And I take great delight in blasting those fighters to Stardust. I trust you will too. See you out there. Kyo Venzi. Welcome to Vanguard Squadron. You'll do great things with us. Trust me. This is an amazing team. I went from semi-pro racing to fighting the Empire. Quite a change. But everyone in Vanguard lifts up the others. You'll fit right in. Whatever this Project Starhawk is, I suppose the commanders will tell us when they're ready. But for now, we have scouts to find. According to the battle plan, we aren't flying together on this mission. But you'll be on my wing sooner than later. See you out there. As you've no doubt experienced, the Empire is jamming communication. Vanguard Squadron, Frisk and Grace. Find out what happened. Gunny and Keo, knowing the M, they'll have time. Communi- When you've succeeded, let's see how you do. Nice to meet ya. Squad calls me Frisk. Only Grace calls me by my real name. And only when she's mad. I know it's not often you find a handsome fella like me fighting for the Rebellion, or New Republic, or whatever we are now. I used to be in what you might call acquisitions, you know, hunting down trophies, antiques, anything collectors wanted. Until I got that pesky death mark, of course. How was I supposed to know that painting was fake? Huh? Or that the Imperial Governor was gonna show it off to Admiral Thrawn. That's what's great about this place, though. They always got a berth for a good pilot. Death mark or not. Say, you play Sabak? I'm trying to learn, but no one around here ever wants to play me. Maybe we could, uh, go a few rounds, huh? <laughs> for credits, of course. It's the only way I'm gonna learn, right? Guess we should get on and fix that calm blackout.
finally a chance to get acquainted. Like I said, the name's Gunny. Stay sharp, keep your nose clean, and we'll be off to a good start. We had calm blackouts like this right before the Empire invaded Mimban. Lost a lot of friends. But I learned to shoot a blaster. You'll be flying with Frisk and Grace today. Meet them if you haven't. The best advice I can give you is this. Stick with your squadron. It's simple, but sometimes hotshots and lone wolves need to hear it. Get to your ship. You ready to go? Just hop in the cockpit. A mission already? Good. I'm not one for waiting around. Got an X-Wing ready for you here. A real beauty if you need... Sorry. The droid's giving me the eye. Little rust buckets are always planning something, right? I was gonna say, if you need anything for that shiny starfighter of yours, just come to me, all right? I'll see you fixed up. We should run a pre-flight check on your X-Wing. Climb into the cockpit when you're ready. Ah, the X-Wing. Backbone of the Rebel Alliance and our new Republic. A good old rounder that'll stand up to any starfighter or capital ship in the Imperial fleet. systems. Check. All right. I'm loading in your astromech droid now. Keep an eye on it. Quiet, tin can. We got a pre-flight check to do. Radar. Working like a dream. Loadout data. Looking good. Combat display? Check. Primary weapons, charged up. Ready to take down ties. Throttle and boost? Good to go. Hull integrity? Never better. You're welcome. All systems go. Vanguard 5, you are clear for launch. Good luck out there. On your wing. Away we go. Stay close, Vanguard 5. Primary mission parameters, Vanguard Squadron. Find the scouts, smash the jamming ships. And get back before the cantina closes. I think Commander Cave skipped that in the briefing. Thanks, Otto. We'll be careful. once you find our missing pilots, all right? See you soon. Good luck, you two. Our jump point's just ahead. Coordinates calculated. Engines are hot. 
Let's do this, Vanguard Squadron. our target. Let's slow it down. It's not a new Republic signal. It's Imperial.
get it off our tail then.
support for the Empire's jamming ships. If we scan the wreckage for its last known trajectory, it could lead us to the jammers. That's a heck of an idea. Vanguard 5, scan the debris and we'll watch your back. Was, was that cutscene really necessary? Also, hi everyone. Thank you for watching. It's kind of like a flight simulator. Um, at least it definitely feels like it. Um, I I'm enjoying it. Definitely intense. Um, it's it's a little hard to get used to the combat. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a sensory overload. Um, but. God damn, it's so cool. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Um, I feel like VR is kind of necessary for this game. I haven't played it just with my monitor yet. Because, I mean, I have the headset. Why not use it? But I have a feeling that if I did that, I'll definitely notice a difference between the gameplay. Um the the depth and perspective and sense of scale is really something that you can't quite grasp with with just a, a 2D screen you know um, it's a little unfortunate you can't really see what I'm seeing here uh, but it's 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 really cool uh, I feel like I'm sitting in the cockpit um, I don't know. I guess uh, I'll try and continue here. I know I'm not the best at this game, but I'm trying. <laughs> the mouse and keyboard is a little bit of a a challenge. Uh, the the keyboard uh, is okay, but the the mouse is really the problem because there's a dead zone where the the mouse doesn't move the ship, and it you can't really adjust it man if this game doesn't get it get you to get vr um i mean there's a couple others that i could definitely recommend um i know one one game for sure that's gotten me to lose weight and get more active is beat saber i know that's not for everyone but man i i just i love swinging that the the sabers to the uh the music it's really addictive um i do have a steam controller i'm holding off on trying it because the analog stick is essentially just going to be my thumb pad um and i have an 8-bit do uh but it's like the snes controller so i mean i could try it but i don't know how well i do also i think i might have to charge it so i might have to do that some other time um, definitely recommend, uh, if you ever get a chance to, to try a headset, definitely see if you can try this game out. At least, uh, I was doing the training mode when I was last playing, um, yesterday and just flying around, like, it, it's incredible. Like I, if, if the game was just flying in space with, with you in, in the X-Wing and shooting at random squads of TIE Fighters, I would be 100% okay with that. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, as cheap as that sounds, just the experience is something you, you don't really get. And this really puts you in the seat for real. Like, I, 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 I do have to get a joystick. I was actually looking at them on Amazon uh, earlier today, so I'm probably going to order one up. Um, there's a lot of them that are sold out, though, so... I uh I got to pick and choose, I guess. Anyways, I'm going to go back into the game here. Did I play the original X-Wing? Um yeah, the the DOS ones, yeah. And then there was There was like another, hold on. It was like a Rogue Squadron game or something that was on PC. I don't remember the actual title. It might've just been called Rogue Squadron 3D or something. But I remember playing that a lot as well. And, um, of course, there's, like, the arcade games that you'd see at, like, a Dave & Buster's or something. Or, uh, you know, arcade. Any arcade, really. Um, like, the St the Star Wars arcade game. I have that on here, which I can play. You know, it, it's it's still fun, but missing out on the, the giant screen with the joystick and the... Yeah, it wa it wasn't like X-Wing and TIE Fighter at all, but it was like Flight Simulator-esque, you know. You're still flying. I don't know. It made me think of that game. Um Yeah, let me let me go back in the game. I really want to keep playing it. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, I can't have the the Twitch chat while I'm playing. I had to take the headset off. I don't have the uh I don't know what it's called. Uh I don't remember. There's some program that you can get to look at the ch the chat when you're in in game, but I think you have to use the VR controller. So that, that won't even help me here because I don't, I don't I'm not using them. Which is really uh, it's too bad, but I understand why that's not a thing. Okay. Okay.
jamming ships. Sure thing, Grace. I'll soften them up. You two finish them off. You got a missile incoming. Taking damage. Seems they've locked on.
up your wall and stock up your ordinance. Follow me. I'm with you. Vanguard, we have an Imperial cruiser protecting the last of the jammers. Taking down these ships ain't gonna be easy. Not while the cruiser has a missile launcher. We'll keep our countermeasures ready. What's our play? If we take out the jammers first, we can call the temperance for reinforcements. That's why you're in charge, Cubby. Vanguard 5, focus on the jammers. Okay. Here we go. Too close. got stuck on the fucking ship. <laughs> Here 
Team, first round's on Frisk. Welcome home, Vanguard. No time for celebration, I'm afraid. We have a visitor and a mission. I think you'll be interested.
The Empire won't push into our territory again anytime soon. Thanks to our new pilot. Yeah, and thanks to the rest of us. This isn't a race, all right? We're a team. You're right, Gunny. But still, nice flying out there. Speaking of fancy flying, I was thinking about the Dragon Void run from a few years back. You see that one, Keo? Oh, sure. I caught the whole thing on the hollow net. Yeah, me too. I watched the entire thing, but for the life of me, I can't recall who won. I think it was one of the Ash Twins. No, wait. Delon Vu. Yeah, that's it. Boy, he was something else back then. In fact, the only pilot I've seen that comes close since is Keo here. Oh, come on. Dylan Vuk's got nine championships under his belt. I've only got five. Well, fun as this is, Commander Javes has someone special waiting for us in the briefing room. Let's get in there and find out what's next. Commander's waiting. So where is it now? I helped Talus Group chase it away from a medical convoy towards Yavin. It's pinned in the upper atmosphere with no hyperdrive, but too many fighters for Talus Group to handle alone. This might work out for both of us. Come, meet our visitor. Wedge Antilles, Rogue Squadron. I hear you're the reason I was able to finally get a calm through. I have a Star Destroyer problem that Vanguard might be able to help me solve. We need a Star Destroyer for Project Starhawk. Intact. Now we prove what Vanguard's made of. Wedge, if you would. Time to get you briefed. As you may have overheard, Talos Group has cornered the Imperial Star Destroyer Victorum above the planet Yavin. They're in tough, but it's presented a great opportunity for us to jump in and not only disable that Star Destroyer, but to seize control. So first, we need to give ourselves some cover by knocking out the turrets. Naturally, if we can also take out the targeting system, that'll buy us even more time. Next, we need to prepare the Star Destroyer for boarding. You'll need to find a potential breach point in the Victorum's hull, preferably near the bridge. Once you find a good spot, bombard it until the hull is breached. However, we can expect that the Victorum still has plenty of TIE fighters. They will try to stop us. Once the skies are clear, we can bring in the boarding team. While our troops capture the bridge, Vanguard will defend the exterior from reinforcements. Once the boarding team has seized the bridge and is in control of the Star Destroyer, we will rendezvous with the Temperance. Okay, I think I accidentally made stealing a Star Destroyer sound simple. Let's hope it is. Sorry for the speedy introduction. The Talus Group was counting on me to get reinforcements fast. Your commander says you have talent. Enough to steal a Star Destroyer and get away with it. Normally, I'd have Rogue Squadron for this. But General Sindula gave me a temporary assignment to Project Starhawk. 
Meanwhile, Rogue is handling, well, that's classified too. General Sindula keeps us busy. Your commander and I have something in common. I once flew for the Empire too, at Sky Strike Academy. Turning to the Rebellion was the smartest move I ever made. I wish more of my friends had done the same. Look, I appreciate the talk, but uh, Talus Group's waiting for us. A Star Destroyer? Aren't you tossing him in the deep end a little early, Lyndon? Vanguard can handle it. Can't you? Besides, Project Starhawk needs that Star Destroyer for... Well, you know. Wedge made a name for himself at the Battle of Yavin. He knows that system better than the Empire ever will. You'll be fighting on the Rebellion's old turf. So if Wedge has any advice, he'd be smart to listen. You know, a wounded Krakana can still bite. Just watch yourself around that Star Destroyer, huh? Get out there as soon as you can. Commander wants you in an X-Wing for this mission. Got you outfitted with ion missiles. They disable enemy fighters. Very nice. That was so glitchy. What just happened? Too bad there isn't an easier way to get what we need. Even a damaged Star Destroyer has deck upon deck of Durasteel plating, turrets, shields. My poor, bigoted father called Star Destroyers the fists of the Empire. He wasn't wrong. But they can be beaten. If you're good and lucky. Let's stay optimistic. To Yavin, then. Let's not delay. What you looking for? Coming right up. What you looking for? I I love missing out on combat. Or not combat, content. <laughs> what am I saying? Um the uh the dialogue won't repeat itself, so I, I'll never know what she said, I guess. Maybe if I restart the game? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Give me one second, I want to go grab a drink real quick.
Alright, I'm back. <clears throat> Could do without the plot and intermission stuff. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I just want to play the game, you know? But I don't I don't really mind the story. I, I guess I wouldn't mind it as much if it wasn't told in the way it was. I don't like that everything is like, um... Uh, what do you call it? What's the word? What's the word? Um, it's, it's like your... Your movement in the... This, in this area is... Um, very reminiscent of... Uh, the, the VR games when they first came out. Uh, when movement wasn't really part of the game, where most mostly it was, uh, you point somewhere and teleport there, you know, with a blink type, uh, you know, something to prevent motion sickness, which I totally understand. You know, they want to cater to the majority of their user base, which is probably going to be children and young adults. And uh, even old people, so you know, people of all all ages, they want people to be able to play this game or at least try it. Motion sickness is a huge thing in VR. Um, you don't really necessarily get your VR legs the uh, like the second you put it on. You're gonna get a little bit of of dizziness and and whatnot. I remember the first time I wore VR and took it off. My sense of depth was very off after I took it off for an extended period of time. Like it felt like I was viewing my life through a lens, which is kind of weird to say, but it, it was like it was taking me out of my body in a weird way. I was looking at life in a strange perspective like th things looked different I don't know how to how to really describe it um, other, th other than that um, there's a little bit of like um, of a distortion at first for me at least uh, but that went away really quick uh, that and um, also the um, the motion sickness is something that I'll still experience over time but I remember at first, I think the worst game that I had tried to play with that was probably Payday 2. And that game, uh, the movement is so fast in that game, and smooth locomotion isn't the best, but it's as close as you get to normal movement without moving your legs. And I think without moving your legs is the big issue. Cause to me, it just feels like I'm floating around, or like I'm, I'm I'm like on a hoverboard, whenever I'm using smooth locomotion. And if it's too fast, I just it's it's too it's too much. Uh, but again, uh, over time and and whatnot, you'll get used to it. You won't feel like throwing up. <laughs> Your vision, your vision is like twenty one twenty. Would that impact the VR? Um, I'm pretty sure you can wear glasses with these things, and you can also change the eye depth of the headset to to adjust to your your eyes. So I don't think it'll be. I would Google that because I can't tell you that uh, like for sure, but. I would think that it would be okay. Um, <clears throat> again, it would really help to be able to try out the thing. I don't know if there's anywhere you can really do that. All the places are probably shut down. <laughs> no arcades are open for, uh, for any time soon, maybe. I don't know. I'd with COVID and all that, I just don't see any place like that being open where 
people are touching buttons and things. Your cousin has one? You could try his. Definitely recommend trying it out first. Um, I got, I was fortunate to be able to try out VR before I bought it, so I knew what I was getting into. Um, and I bought the same headset that I had tried, which was the, the OG Vive, the original one. So, well, the I guess it's like the second Gen OG Vive. It's like not the first one, but the second one they made, Gen 2 or whatever. But it's it's the it's not the pro is what I'm getting at. That it still has wires. I I would love to have a wireless headset, but at the same time, all the things that I read about it and like knowing connectivity in my area here at least, I feel like if I had implemented wireless with this headset, I would have a bad time with uh, just random disconnects or just. Um, I mean, you can even see it. When when I'm moving the headset around, um, if if I get out of range of the the sensors, the headset just dies. Like you'll see right in a second, it's gonna lose. Maybe not. I put it in a place that normally it can't see anything, but I guess it's uh, maybe here. I don't know. Yeah. So if I block it, I don't. I don't know. It, it's really good about it. If but um. I have to, it's my own fault. I have to move the sensors in my room. <laughs> They're not set up properly at all by any means. Uh, I could have better, better connection if I had just moved them. Um, but I'm waiting to do that until I can properly set up the room. They've gone down in price a lot over, uh, over the year. And with the announcement of new ones coming out, they're going to keep dropping. So now would probably be the best time to buy one. Or at least this holiday season. Uh, I really, again, I'm really enjoying this game. Um, I feel like... Uh, again, I don't, know, I don't know what it would be like without the, the headset, but... I feel like this game was definitely built with VR in mind. So, if you were looking at this game purely for, you know, for for the gameplay, I don't I don't know if I'd really recommend it based on what I've played. Well, I don't I don't know. I it's fun, but it's pretty simple. Um, you know, if you if you dumb down the combat like I've done on like pilot mode or whatever, easy, normal, whatever, it gets pretty silly um but it's you know it's fun and that, i think that's all that really matters um in the end at least uh but i mean you know when i was crashing into that ship i don't know if you're here but i cracked it i crashed into a ship and i just bounced off of it a bunch of times and got stuck on it and if i was on like the higher higher difficulties i would have blown up instantly of course which would have been fine and that's kind of why i was playing on the harder difficulty at first for the realism factor, but they just hurt so much more than you hurt them. Or I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's me just sucking. I don't know. It's definitely hard to focus on where they're flying and trying to manage my health at the same time and evading. I guess now I have to evade missiles at the same time. I don't know, it's just one thing after the other. I wonder how much... Like, it's fun, but I wonder how much of this is going to um, translate into multiplayer. Probably not a whole lot of it. If I had to guess, it's just like mostly just shoot and evade in that game. I, I don't know what multiplayer is even like. It's apparently 5v5. Um... I I think a lot of kids are going to have fun playing this game, for sure. Um, and I feel like this is definitely going to help sell VR headsets to a lot of people who are on the fence, like you. Uh, especially people who are fans of Star Wars. I just, uh, I, I can't really think of anything else that 
that I can compare it to. Maybe Elite Dangerous or... Um, There's another. There was some game where you're not in a ship, though. You're just like an astronaut stranded in space. I think it might have been called Adrift. But I was just trying to think of other space games with VR. I think Elite Dangerous is the closest in terms of like coming close to this. I, Elite Dangerous is of course much more complex. You can actually control the ship in a much normal fashion. Again, I'm not using a controller, so I don't maybe it's easier with that. I don't know. Um I really feel like I need to just get a joystick though, so I'm gonna hold off. And probably just do that. I'd like to be able to play the new Flight Simulator game, but I don't think I can run it, because I'm not on Windows 10. This game was supposed to be on Windows 10 only. I hacked it so that it could run. It's one of the reasons why I'm a little hesitant to even try multiplayer. I don't know if Easy Anti-Cheat is going to pick up this thing as a hack or not. And ban me. Um... I don't think it will. It's just reshade. It's not like a fucking hack or anything. It's just, uh... I feel like it's this, this problem's gonna keep happening, and, and eventually I'm just gonna have to build a new computer, so... I'm waiting for the that one game that really pushes me to that point, and I really thought Cyberpunk was gonna be it, but it's not. So, I feel like this computer's gonna live another year or two at least. Maybe, maybe another five at most. I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to play what's out on the market, I don't know. Uh, let me, uh, let me play some more. How about that? if I should try multiplayer or not. I don't know if... I feel like I should finish the story first before I get anywhere close to that. Not that it really matters, but... I'm just more curious in the story and where they go with it. No, it doesn't really hold, matter a whole lot, but... um, It's just more Star Wars, and I like that. Kind of makes you feel like you're playing your own episode. In a weird way. What is the plot so far? Um, what, it takes place between... I'm trying to think. It, it's like right after Alderaan blows up or something, so it's like during... During that time period? Pretty sure that's when it takes place. I'm trying to think of the first cutscene that I saw. And I I remember seeing Alderon blow up. Uh, I think it's after the Battle of Endor. I think it's after... I think it's after Return. Wait, Return? What am I saying? R return of the Jedi? Yeah. I can't believe I'm forgetting the names of the movies already.
The one with the green lightsaber. Um. <laughs> you play as, like, both sides, so I'm trying to recall, like, what happened. Because you, you follow the side of, uh, you know, one guy who's on the rebel team and one guy who's from the Empire... And you you see the same story from both sides, kind of. So it's like you're fighting against yourself in a weird way. Um. I wish I had more concrete what happened, because I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> the gameplay has trumped the story for me so far. Like, I am having so much more fun enjoying the game uh, for the the actual gameplay than the, than the story itself. It's a little hard to focus on it because there's just so much that's happening. Um, I wouldn't say it's too important, but I don't know. I'm trying to see if I can find some kind of synopsis or something that like sums up the first thing, but every wiki, every entry on this doesn't even bother to go onto the story. So th that should tell you how important it is. Get in an A-Wing if I get the chance? Well, I can do, um... I can do that. Um, if I go into the, um... <clears throat> well... If I go into the, uh, the, the multiplayer training thing, you can just, like, spawn into whatever ship you want. Let me do that real quick for you. And then I'll continue the story. No, no, that's fine. I want you to see this. It's really cool. Hold on. I can come right back here. It's not like I'm losing Good out on ship. anything. Checkpoints for the win.
coming for me. <laughs> this is so fun, even though I'm crashing and stuff, it's still really, really fun. One thing it's it's hard to get used to remembering that I can actually turn my head around. <laughs> Another thing that I need to remember is that I actually can cancel the boost myself. I have to hit the button again. followed.
Tail. Fuck yeah, that was awesome.
Where's the next one? I mean, I've already lost this time course. Where, where was it? Oh, okay. I did not mean to hit the boost. Oh well. <laughs> Play as these others as well. Which is pretty cool. What can I get for you? I really feel like having a joystick would really um, improve the experience for sure.
The TIE, vi the TIE Fighter visibility does suck, but again, something that I don't know if you can really quite grasp in VR is the sense of depth and perspective. And I feel like with the headset, as much as the vi visibility does suck, you kind of get used to it. And it's a little manageable, but for sure, compared to the, uh, the rebel scum, you, uh, you, you don't get as much, um, visibility, which I think is fine, you know, compared to the, uh, I, I, I bet compared to the, the rebels, they have more firepower. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's probably balanced in some way. It has to be. Free space with all the nebula. Sorry, I'm just catching up on all this. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I uh, I really feel like um, you're you're gonna have fun in VR with this game if you do get it. Um. It's very cool. <laughs> I I feel like a little kid again. Every time I'm, you know, sitting in the the cox, cox the cockpit seat, Jesus. <clears throat> I cannot speak. Okay, let's continue the story. And then I'm gonna probably switch games. I put a, a YouTube video of the, I guess the first playthrough, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. The first video of this is up on my YouTube if you wanted to check it out. You might get a little more of my first impressions there, but I feel like you kind of get the gist of, uh, of everything so far. The Empire won't push into our territory again anytime soon. Thanks to our new pilot. Yeah, and thank- You're right, Gun. But speaking of things- Oh, sure. Yeah, me too. I think- Yeah! Oh. Well, let's get- Commander. So where is it now? As you may have heard. They're in tough. So first, naturally, if we can... Next, you'll need to find a... Once you find a good... However... We can... Actually, we let's, re let's read this. Or hear it. Heard. Whatever. Talos Group has cornered the Imperial Star Destroyer Victorum, above the planet Yavin. They're in tough. But it's presented a great opportunity for us to jump in and not only disable that Star Destroyer, 
but to seize control. So first, we need to give ourselves some cover by knocking out the turrets. Naturally, if we can also take out the targeting system, that'll buy us even more time. Next, we need to prepare the Star Destroyer for boarding. You'll need to find a potential breach point in the Victorum's hull, preferably near the bridge. Once you find a good spot, bombard it until the hull is breached. However, we can expect that the Victorum still has plenty of TIE fighters. They will try to stop us. Once the skies are clear, we can bring in the boarding team. While our troops capture the bridge, Vanguard will defend the exterior from reinforcements. Once the boarding team has seized the bridge and is in control of the Star Destroyer, we'll rendezvous with the Temperance. Okay, I think I accidentally made stealing a Star Destroyer sound simple. Let's hope it is. Sorry for the speedy introduction. You command... Normally, I... Meanwhile, you command... Turning... Look, I appreciate... The Star Destroyer? Vanguard... Where? You'll be... It... Get out... So, we're headed to Yavin. And... Too bad that but they can't to Yavin then. <laughs> it's always funny speed running through uh through dialogue. That never will get old. The little bits of the uh, little bits of words that you get to hear. Um uh, we'll be able to hear what I missed uh when I clicked on this last time, so I'm gonna let her talk. The commander wants you on an X-Wing for this mission. Got you outfitted with ion missiles. They disable enemy fighters and they'll disable subsystems on enemy capital ships too. Okay. I mean, that, that would have been fine to repeat if I went back into the menu. It's so short. But that's fine. Let me just put this back to here for now. I have nothing to prove to anyone right now. I just want to play the game and see what the story is. I'll try the, uh, the ace mode when I get more comfortable with it. It was nice to try, and I like that there's a hard difficulty, so 
I don't know. I maybe it's a little too hard. I mean, the the constant drain of your health as soon as you enter combat, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know what to really do to counter that. I mean, I can use my shield. I can move my power all to shields, but then I can't really shoot or move. I don't know. I, I don't know. Wedge, we've taken heavy losses. We need to make a few repairs, then get ourselves out of here. Roger that, Talus Leader. And don't worry about the Imperials. We'll keep them busy. You're really gonna steal that Star Destroyer? That's the plan. Focus 
our shields before they open fire on us. internal systems. Stand for a beach point, so we can send an avoiding team. You're on five. Breaching a star just prior, just like the old days. Look out, Vanguard! We got a gunny story incoming! Mine hasn't heard it. Sure. Just tell me when I can turn my comms back on. If your comms are off, how can we tell you to... No, forget it. Imperial fighters incoming. Thank you. 
Watch a breach that breach point. Taking enemy fire. Yes. Take the trash chute. Now, who's those last fighters back? Clear the skies. Got an enemy locked up. Just keep coming. Interceptor's on me! Can't shake him! Back on five. Help him out. I'm in a real bind here. On your wing. Sites. Ready to take on a Star Destroyer? Copy, Captain Antilles. Just get us there and we'll do the rest. You heard him, Vanguard. Guide those U-Wings into position. Stay sharp. What about the Star Destroyer's crew? If our boarding party takes the bridge, they'll slice internal security systems. The crew will be a problem with no computer access and all the blast doors locked. Imperial carrier, they're launching reinforcements. They're not giving up the Victoria without a fight. Vanguard, take down that cruiser.
Vanguard. Let's regroup at the Victorum. The boarding team might need support. We're almost through those blast doors! Man, what a fucking game. Yeah, I feel like if I had better controls, I'd, I'd definitely uh, have a better chance at surviving Ace. There were some gameplay elements that I didn't know, though, so maybe there are more that'll help later on, That I, again, that I don't know yet. Um... I don't know, again, this this game is so cool. Uh, it sucks to see that it's getting a lot of mixed reviews. I feel like part of that might be just because it might not just be the same experience in, on the 2D screen. I don't know. Um, I feel like that might be part of the issue. Uh, again, I'll, I'll have to try it at some other point, but... I definitely recommend this in V1. 